Hi guys and welcome to the Business As Unusual show. It is Wednesday, would you believe it? And um, we have been barred already with multiple technical issues just to get to this point. So I don't quite know how this show is going to pan out, but we're going to do our best as we always do. If you're new to the channel, um, please do check out the content that we've got there. There's loads of stuff around digital marketing. If you're making your first steps toward digital marketing or if you want to take it to the next level, uh, do check it out on LinkedIn or on YouTube. But before we kick off with the show, um, let's have a quick look at what is going on this week in the news. It's a week that saw the country realize that the test and trace system was actually just based on an Excel uh, data an uh, Excel spreadsheet sheet and well obviously someone doesn't know how to use it so that's always encouraging we also saw Instagram celebrate its 10th anniversary uh, hashtag old girl would you believe it 10 years for Instagram and finally we've seen Google's G Suite update into Google Workplace with a much more aesthetically pleasing designs which will be really cool can't wait for that anyway it's Wednesday it's beer o'clock here which means it's okay for you no matter where you are in the world right now so Without further ado, let's get down to business as unusual. Hi guys and welcome to the Business As Unusual show. My name is Luke. I'm the CEO of Sleeping Giant Media and Giant Campus. And this is a show that we put on at the start of lockdown many, many months ago. And it feels that we should keep on doing it because still things are unusual and they're un you know, unlikely to change for quite some time. So it's a show where we get an opportunity to interview various different guests, hear about their challenges, their opportunities, but also talk about a particular topic. Um, <clears throat> and today we're probably going to be focusing more around people and HR. We have a fantastic guest with Julia. We are going to introduce her just now. Julia, after some technical challenges, we've got you here. How's it going? Not too bad. Just taking away any last minute stress, running around getting technical things sorted. So brilliant. I know. It's just it just I don't know why. I think it, it, it's something we've been doing. This this I think this is I don't I can't even remember. Is this fit? I don't know forty six. I think this is. I can't remember. But I would have thought by now I would have managed to work it all out. <laughs> but no, apparently not. No, we haven't. Um, could you do a quick introduction to yourself and the business, please? Yes, uh, so I'm Julia Crawford and my business is a HR consultancy called People Pillar Limited, which I started at the beginning of July. Beginning Much, of July. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Great, no, it's awesome. I mean, so, I mean, straight off the bat, how, um, what, what started the process? Why did, what kind of got you into it at that point? Because again, I've, I've had a few questions from um, lots of people reaching out, asking about, you know, when's the right time to start a new business and, um, and what's, what's your thoughts on it? How's it going so far? I was hoping to go live beginning of April and put it on hold for various reasons. <laughs> <Why's that>? <laughs> <laughs> Don't quite know. Um, and thought I got to July, so three months in, that actually there's still a real need. That actually the the amount of HR issues with people being furloughed, having to work from home, some flexible working issues. Actually, it was a perfect time to go live. Brilliant. And um, if, if there's ever a perfect time. Well, as you say, I mean, do, I mean, is there is? I mean, I think. The, the, the sort of conversations I've had with people, they were talking about, you know, is it is it a good time? But I guess that my my kind of comment would always be, I think you can talk yourself out of it at any moment, like regardless of of what's going on externally. There's is almost there isn't either necessarily a good or a worse time. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the time that you decide to to kind of to do it. And um, is this your your first sort of foray into your own business, or have you something yes. something before? And no, just. Just first time, dipping my toe in, see how it goes. Fantastic. And um, how's it how's it going so far? Yeah, it's, it's going well, actually. It's, uh, it's always going to be slow building business, but um, I've already got a few clients, which is fantastic. Awesome. Um, I think the other real benefit of being in lockdown is that actually a lot of the networking events are on Zoom. So actually, I can get around a lot more, certainly around Kent. Mm. Um Whereas normally you might be a little bit more limited if you've got to physically travel. Have you been? So to there's the, some real advantages. Have you been to the Kent Invicta Chamber networking event? Yeah. Good. I was going to say because I'm sure I've seen your name on there, um, but yeah. I've, I don't think we've actually. I don't think I've had a chance to chat to you yet. I, I tried. That's coming up next 
Tuesday, next Tuesday at four o'clock. So if anyone is watching, wanting to do some awesome networking, we have a few games, a few bits of uh, fun <laughs> on those. So if you are watching, want to get involved, um, Molly, I'm sure, will be commenting at some point on this as well, so you can get her details from there and find out more information. Um, so how is um, how like you had expectations? I don't know, or maybe you didn't, about setting up your own business. How are they matching up, sort of pre and post, or are you, are you sort of still in the honeymoon period at the moment? Uh, probably in honeymoon period with a few more bags under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, this is why I, mainly why I wear glasses. It tries to, sort of, it's like people are like is that shadow? It's like no, those are just those are just bags right now. Um, so no, it's, it's it's going well actually. It's um, I'm really enjoying the, the actual running your business side of it. Um, it's doing the finance, the marketing side, getting to grips with Mailchimp, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, I mean, I know you're relatively early in, in the journey so far, but what, what advice or um, anyone who's sort of looking to set up a new business or go on, you know, do something maybe on a freelance level? Because again, it, obviously this, the whole pandemic has, has obviously caused a few people to lose their jobs and, and look for, yeah. for different opportunities and, and potentially quite a good opportunity to go kind of freelance. What, what sort of um, advice or thoughts would you give kind of at this point of your journey? I'd say definitely go for it. I think make sure you've got a proper plan of what you want to do and who and, and what what your business is all about and who your who your ideal client would be. Um, otherwise, I think you can waste quite a bit of time going down different rabbit holes. Um, if in an ideal situation, have some money behind you so that you've actually got that bit of a buffer. <laughs> it's always helpful, I think. Always helpful. Um, but I think just give it a go. I think it's there's so many people out there and so many different organizations that are that can help you and that are willing to share experiences and sort of guide you through. And also I think to provide that that support network because I think it can be quite lonely otherwise. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think and, and actually it'd be good to circle back on, on that one as well. We've got a few mm. um so I've just I've just loaded up the chat window, guys. I've, I haven't seen some of those earlier comments. I'll see if I can grab those in a second. But I, the first one I've got on my list now is reloaded. Again, technical challenges, reset of the router. About thirty. Well, about sorry, about five minutes before live. Slightly panicking <laughs> there. Um, Caroline Palmer said you've got two hundred twenty-three followers on your company um, page so far on LinkedIn, um, which is impressive for such a new business. Just be interested to know how you've attracted that following. So, what sort of stuff have you been up to? Um, mainly networking. I think for me with my business, it's all going to be based on trust and actually building relationships with people. Um, I might have a website, but actually I'm not really going to get huge amounts of business from people going cold to my website. So absolutely networking is, and or starting to do the networking is, is crucial. Um, I'm then building my LinkedIn presence based on where I'm doing networking events. Um, I think when I started back in April, when I looked to start back in April, I think I had about 250 connections on LinkedIn and I'm well over a thousand now, right. which, which, so it's just, it's busy sending out connections, I think is a big part of it. Invest, um, yeah, investing time in those personal yes. sort of connections. Uh, fantastic. Definitely. Great stuff. And Caroline, feel free to join the Kenya Victor Chamber Networking. I'll uh, see you there. Um, and I, I see a comment here from, Mary saying, okay, great, thanks, but I have no context as to what the first bit was. So if anybody in chat wants to tell me what that first <laughs> bit was, that would be, that'd be fantastic. Um, what, what does success look like for you? What's the sort of, what would you deem as, as kind of your goals or um, what's success? Oh, difficult one. I think for me, I ultimately want to grow my business. Um, I want to, you know, I want to be working with small businesses and knowing that I can actually really it sounds very millennial but I want to really make a difference I want to I want to get in there and actually provide support and guidance and advice that is is useful to them and not just this standard kind of HR response of no you can't do that I want to look at how I can help them navigate through processes or employment law and actually get them to the outcome that they need or want might not always be possible but that's that's kind of what I see as being successful, that if actually that's the feedback I'm getting from small businesses, that'd be brilliant. Gosh, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And sorry, now it makes more sense. Danny has said it is being, is it being recorded? Yes, it is, as someone has already <laughs> answered clearly in chat. So thank you very much for that one. Um, it'd be on YouTube mm -hmm. and also live on LinkedIn as well. Um, cool. Yeah. So when, when you're working with companies, what sorts of, um, what sort of level would you go in at? Do you support the, the company owner? How, how does it, how does it sort of, how do you anticipate your role sort of sitting within the organization? 
Uh, definitely supporting the owner. Um, I think it could be, it could also be working with slightly bigger businesses who have got a HR um, admin, for example, and actually providing coaching and mentoring to them. Um, so yeah, it could be providing some quite low level HR advice up to helping them plan for the future in terms of what they want to do with their people. Awesome. So full, full spectrum. Full spectrum, yeah. What, what do you think is the, the biggest challenge facing businesses in the next couple of months on, an, on a people level? I think it's, it is actually how do they how do they survive? I think some businesses are thriving actually where they've either had uh, the right type of business to start with or they've adapted their business as a result of, of COVID. Um, for others, they've almost gone into a bit of a, a kind of, they're frozen at the moment where they don't really know what to do. They're just literally trying to survive and get through the next few months. Um, and actually, they may have to start making some difficult decisions, which yeah. for particular for small businesses where they have still got people with them when they first from when they first started up, actually, they've got some really hard decisions to be making, yeah. which isn't that nice. Absolutely. And uh, what I, I guess um, one of the things that um, we're sort of seeing, I think, as an organisation is obviously you had this whole sort of lockdown where everything went through sort of panic mode in sort of March and into April. Then it looked like felt like things are on the kind of on the positive and they're talking kind of externally yeah. so you know our, the, our business is is actually quite easy to move to remote working which is, has been relatively simple for us but the, almost the sort of the external environment was quite negative in in sort of april quite quite rightly um and it felt like we're kind of stepping coming out of it into september but then suddenly we're not <laughs> suddenly it's kind of changing and then we've also got kind of brexit and, and mental health is something that we yes. think is going to be quite uh a significant Definitely. factor in the next few months. Mm, absolutely, I think um, it's actually how how people deal with their own um, their own experience of, of of being in a lockdown. But I think it's from a business point of view. You, what I'm certainly finding is that that employers are going sort of 170 miles an hour at the moment, trying to do everything they can to to keep going. And actually, at some point they might run out of, they can't carry on working at that level. Um, so it's a real potential for burnout mm. at, at, for some people. And I think mental health is certainly being talked about a lot more, which is great. Um, but I think it's also something which is going to really start to see an increase as, a, as if we do have to go into a second lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe we can um, dig into that one in a little bit more mm. detail as to what businesses might do. We are going to, at this point point in time, we are in fact going to put, you, uh, oh my gosh, oh my God, hang on, wait, wait. I've just, just <laughs> ruined, this is the problem, isn't it? We went in, we went live and it was, it was kind of dangerous. One second, right, okay. A quiz about HR. Okay, I didn't, fortunately, I didn't reveal the answer to that question. This is, we're going to put you through your paces here, Julia, really I know. test you out here. Okay, who made the oldest recorded expense claim? I'm not quite sure why this falls into the HR category, but um, which one made the oldest expense claim, do you think? Captain Cook, Abraham Lincoln, William Shakespeare, or Amelia Earnhardt? Earnhardt. We've got a... Ooh, let's go Shakespeare. Shakespeare. To be or not to be? It is, in fact, oh. Captain Cook. I can, I can imagine that. He's organised. Ship, the shippers, the uh, captain is very <laughs> organised. What percentage of people would take less pay to have more fun at work? <laughs> 20. 55%. Oh, lying. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I mean, you know, the cat loving that ball pit. We can't use our ball pit at the moment. It's uh, not COVID friendly, unfortunately. <laughs> um, question number three. Speaking of human resources, true or false, the average human body has 0.2 milligrams of gold in it. This is really. I'm going to get it wrong. Just typically, I'm going to get all of these. Fifty-fifty now. I was actually. I know. I think I was the last person in the country to actually start watching Breaking Bad the other night, and they actually showed what the breakdown of the human body was. <laughs> but I'm still going to get it wrong. I'm going to go. True. It's true. Skull. <laughs> I love that film. Um, um, I don't want to do the accent because number one, I'll get it wrong, and I fear I might call a core of cause offence as well. Um, <laughs> although, if we were to turn that into a natural solid lump of gold, it'd be 0.22 millimeters in measurements, so not that exciting. Um, according to a LinkedIn study, where did most people say 
they would like to work? <clears throat> Alphabet, Facebook, Apple, or Disneyland? I'd go Disney. I'd say Disney, but they might be in trouble at the moment. You won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google, the parent <laughs> company of Google. Hold on one second, I've just realised something. It's the halfway mark. My, go- my Google thingy, my voice assistant is uh, chiming in in the background whilst I was trying to do the halfway <laughs> mark. His it's technology is not loving me today. Should we just give up today? It's, 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 getting, it's getting more attractive. We're battling on though. Never, never give up. That's, the, that's I think the one thing that company ownership has taught me, just never give up. Never, ever give up because it's just, you think you solved it. There's another thing around the corner. Right. Did Ricky Gervais choreograph his now infamous office dance? Yes. <laughs> no. I, I, I think you got one right so far. I know. I mean, it's good because they're not actually related to HR. So, I'm, so you still know your stuff. You. Um, That's all right. Okay. According to Gervais, he just went nuts for thirty seconds and had to sit down for thirty minutes. <laughs> And that concludes our uh, quiz there. I think you've done a, a very good job overall because it was it was funny. I mean, that was that's the main thing. <laughs> it it kind of worked really well. Um, yeah. So th- those are some some challenges there um, with technical and also related to, to business. What um, what do you think businesses can? We're going to jump back into the, the sort of the mental health question. What do you think businesses can do um, on an HR level to to try to address the uh, sort of mental health aspect in the sense that it's something as you said that pe- people are talking a lot more about um but actually what can you what can you do on a practical level i think it's really important for business owners to kind of set the example so actually talk about it actually say that it's okay to be talking about things um i think communication is absolutely key i think it's about finding out what what issues your employees have, what you can be doing to support them. Um, it could be looking at what support is available for employees as well. Uh, it could be sort of like, for example, having some sort of employee assistance program or occupational health. I think absolutely though, I think it's just being patient and not expecting everyone to be in the same place on, on where they are and not treating everybody the same. Um, and just finding out what's going on talking to your staff finding out what's uh, i think it's it's you know you have you have zoom calls and you have everyone having a happy face on there but you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes at all mm. and i think just because they might be engaging in those meetings having vir- a lot of virtual meetings it actually doesn't it doesn't it, you lose a lot of the informal communication and the the informal interaction and that's the bit i think you also need to try and build in yeah, I mean, interesting. That, so on that informal communication, um, is it possible remotely, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think you can do, there's a lot I think you can do. There's, you can have remote nights out. Um, they might be slightly shorter and, uh, and done in a slightly different way. I think it's looking at other forms of communication, actually picking up the phone. Um, I think there are times when it's actually possible for, you know, if you're doing it in a, you, you can go into the workplace. Mm. Um, so there are ways that you can actually go back into the workplace. Yeah. But obviously, it needs to be done following safely, all, all yeah. of the, all the all safety and all the guidance. But no, I think I think people just need to be a bit more creative in terms of how they do keep in, in contact with each other and make sure that they're not forgetting members of the team that might not be as actively involved in those discussions. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think I think um, I think we we were talking about this at lunch actually. Um, talking about trying to where possible allow the team to, to have more because we have one for one of our floors is open um possibly looking at what we can do to try to enable other people to come in as well because it, yeah. it, although you know although we can work from home there is i think possibly long-term implications if we if we don't sort of have face-to-face time with, with the teams because i think the group yeah. chat the group chat's particularly difficult isn't it in, in sort of zoom mm. because obviously you've yes. got to kind of like Oh no! You go. Oh yeah, and it's this weird kind of awkward British kind of moment mm. where we're all trying to mute or unmute as well, which is which is kind of um, <laughs> and difficult. But um, we're also trying a, a buddy system, which we're going to be rolling out as well, which we thought might okay. be quite cool. Um, just again, because it, it's it's trying to ensure that somebody's looking out for you, but it, but in the yeah. Zoom environment, it's, it's very difficult because everyone's kind of quiet or they're just sort of like, yeah, it's all good, and you don't don't really know until you you get a chance to no. speak to them. Yeah. 
challenging. And I think I think it's also encouraging people to make sure they have the microphones on, that they have their, their videos on, um, because actually as soon as you start switching those off, you lose the engagement. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I think alongside that as well, going back to partly the mental health side is actually making sure as an organisation you set the tone of, of like building in breaks in between meetings because I think certainly what I've found is that you can literally go from eight till five mm. on back-to-back calls which is is it quite exhausting at times Absolutely. Um, so, yeah so, so very much setting the behavior of how you would want your organization to be run yeah agreed what what do you think the the changes will be for the the HR sector um sort of post-covid into, as we go into the new world what are the sort of the things that you think will will have either uh, escalated or changed significantly since, say, six, seven months ago, pre, pre-COVID? I think it has massively fast-forwarded a lot of, of positive ways of working as well. So mm. there's a lot more flexibility, actually. I genuinely, people, a large proportion of businesses are thinking differently of, of do they even go back to the office? Do they go back to the workplace? Can they work in different ways or at much smaller locations? So I think alongside that, we need to get a lot more, I think a lot more creative in terms of, of how we do HR. Mm. And and by that means, you know, how do you actually do an induction for someone who isn't in the office, who physically isn't in the office? Yeah. It's it's about looking at different ways of doing things, asking people as well, well how we could do things differently. Mm. But I think overall it has, it, it has made some massive positive changes mainly to flexible working mm. um and, I, and I, I don't think people are going to want to go back they might want to go back into the office maybe one or two days a week um but i i, I think people employee expectation has changed and you know if they want to just go and put the washing in or take the dog out for a walk at, at lunchtime they that's they're going to expect that to be the norm yeah absolutely. um what, what are they... and the dog's going to expect it as well <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What was the poor dog doing before? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what, what, uh, it's, you know, really, really interesting. And um, we've actually we rolled out our sort of flexible working policy as well, which has got kind of a core hours element to it yeah. with the ability to kind of uh, work kind of anywhere you want. So it's kind of anywhere you want sort of um, and the hours that you want and as long as it kind of hits a certain amount during the day and, and it kind of has the core hours available for, for clients as well. Fantastic. Um, what do you think the possible risks or challenges are with um, flexi time in the sense of actually because we, we're only expect we you know we're testing it we're monitoring mm-hmm. and see how it goes we had the same thing when we did on when we launched our unlimited holiday policy as well mm-hmm. and I remember people freaking out about the concept of it because they were just like yeah, but but what about my the, the days that I need to roll over from last year? So well, it's unlimited, isn't it? So it doesn't matter, does it? And it was like people almost need some of the some of the guidelines as well. Mm. What, what do you think the challenges are? You know, potentially with a flexi policy might be. I think it's. I think from my point of view, I think employees absolutely should be treated as adults. That actually, you don't need pages and pages of documents and policies setting out what people can and can't do Mm. i think you need to trust them i think that's probably a big part of it is the trust um i think you need to change how you manage employees as a result of that and i think having the ability to work whenever you want as long as you get your your work done um it's moving much more away from manage you know if you're in the office nine till five that actually you're expected to do your work during that time yeah. it's managing much more on outputs um and i think some people will struggle managing that way so i think there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done with managers to look at how we could do some upskilling with them and actually help them manage in a new way for the future yeah absolutely and there's a question just or a comment in the chat from from Joni saying uh, there's a number of businesses in our area still refusing to consider remote working um, or mm. working flexi hours, which is a shame considering the last six months. I mean, yeah, I don't even know how you <laughs> you don't do that after the last six months. But what, which is, again, it, you know, it seems it seems uh, sort of challenge. It seems odd to me. But could you maybe explain the benefits? Do you think that to you know to those businesses, anybody watching that isn't doing it, isn't considering it? What the benefits would be for flexi hours and for remote working, like in case they don't know. I think you get so much more from your employees. I think it's not just around, you know, people working part time or or different types of hours. I think it's 
I think for businesses that fully embrace it and almost start with the question of you can work any any employee can work flexibly it's down to you to then have the conversation with the manager and the, and the employee around how that could work yeah um I think you will get so much more out of them. I think if if people can go and ki- pick their kids up from school and then come back and work again after they've gone to bed, again you also can attract a whole different um, a whole different workforce yeah. that actually yeah. might not even consider applying for a job. So if if you are recruiting, it opens up so much more. The same in terms of location. If you don't physically have to be in the office, that actually where we are in in Kent, we're sort of we're we're a bit limited on where we actually recruit from unless people relocate Mm. but if you don't physically need people here you can recruit anywhere absolutely yeah and i think um you know i think sometimes people the businesses i come across with struggle with these sorts of ideas and you know unlimited holiday type conversation people are like you're mental i'm like well it it seems like a good idea trust people to make the right decision take time when they need to take the time you know it's it's a good thing to do um and i guess it's you know I think it helps to kind of put the trust back on the employee, but when mm. you get more productivity, you also hopefully make your workplace a really attractive place to be. As you mentioned, yeah, you know, definitely. it's going to be standard soon. And if it's if you're yeah. behind, then why would people choose to kind of work there over somewhere that offers flexi time and, and all those other sort of Absolutely. benefits as well? Yeah, and 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 you might have the odd person that abuses it, but then you deal with them on an individual basis rather than putting these strict parameters around all of your workforce. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fantastic. Well, that was, that was really good. We've got um, one more quick uh, game to see if we can kind of pull this one off, which is the status quote. Um, now, as running, as you start your new business, you're probably no doubt going to have all of these uh, sort of books that you're reading filled with quotes that you will be using <laughs> to inspire yourself every day to go, why on earth did I start doing? And I mean, keep going. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so let's have a look at these now you have to choose one that you like one that you love one that you want to avoid so it's a snog marry okay. avoid type game let's have a look first quote uh, good things come to people who wait but better things come to those who go out and get them anonymous oh i like that's that one start. uh sorry hang on sorry do I have to make a decision no no now? we're good we go through all no, of them good. and you can have a look but that's a good that's a good one right out right out of the uh the hat there first the second one Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Okay, not so sure about that one. We're going on to the third quote. Guys in the chat, please feel free to put down what you think. Uh, the difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone is how high you raise your foot. Benny Lewis. Mm. What are we doing? Like, that's quite a good one. Right, so the final thoughts. So we've got... First quote, good things come to people who wait, but better things come to those who go out and get them. The second quote, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And the third quote, uh, the difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone is how high you raise your foot. What do we think? Which one? Anyone's jumping out that you you really like or dislike? So, uh, middle one, going to avoid. Yeah, agreed. Don't really do much. Uh, The bottom one, I'm going to marry that one. Like it, yeah, with you. Oh, no, 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 I'm not, no, oh. I'm not, sorry. I'm changing oh. my mind already. I'm going to snog that one uh-huh. and marry the first one. Snog that one, marry the first one. So the first one yeah. being good things come to those pe- people who wait, but better things come to those who get go out and get them. I like, but I have to say yeah. those top, the top and bottom one. I, I, I like, I've never heard the uh, the bottom one before. The difference between no. a stumbling block and a stepping stone is how high you raise your foot, which I quite liked. Um, but is there any quote so that you sort of particularly sort of live by or remind yourself of on a on a regular basis to be like right this is why I'm doing what I'm doing I think it's this isn't necessarily why I'm doing what I'm doing but throughout all my HR career I've always said that life is too short to be stuck in a job that you really don't like that you hate that doesn't make you happy um and what you do find you come across quite a few people that that are like that and actually they need to do something different with their lives they need to go out there and find something that makes them happy absolutely and i think you have to live your life by that absolutely and you can either wait for it or you can go out and get it yeah absolutely fantastic well it's been a pleasure having you along sorry for the uh, slight panic at the start That's of the right. show we seem to have kind of pulled it all together with some some hopefully relevant content which is always useful so um, thanks very much for coming along julia and best of luck fantastic um, with the start of the business as well Thank you very much, Luke. Brilliant, guys. That is it from us today. We have 
managed to get through um, another show, which I did. I honestly didn't think it was going to happen. It was it was really really touch and go. About thirty, I think it was twenty eight and a half minutes through, uh, past the hour, and I was not sure we were going to make it. But so I hope you've enjoyed it. We're living in some strange times, but for all of us, it's just business as unusual.